Hello everyone, Father Scott Vanderveer here with another installment of Seriously God? This week we're talking about times when our plans are not working out and it feels like God has completely let us down. Sometimes we feel like God is sitting at a great big desk in heaven and that our file is somewhere in the pile and that God has misplaced it. That God has lost our file and, and we just have no way to believe that God is going to be able to help us with our case now. We're, we're lost. We're lost. That feeling is horrible. And it's unfortunate because it employs a very human way of looking at God to the one who is so far beyond us. It's a, it's a completely human way of imagining God running the world. God's got the whole world in his hands. God's got the whole world, but God's hands are not like our hands. God is not behind some messy desk trying to, to frantically keep all of the, the balls in the air, all the plates spinning. That's what it's like to be human. God is the author of all things. God is like nature. God is, of course, the reason that nature exists. But think about how God is like nature. Grass does not exert effort to grow. The sky is not laboring hard to be blue. The sea doesn't have to put forth a lot of effort into flowing. All of those things are, are natural. We are often stressed because we have goals that are outside of ourselves. But God is, is everywhere and is all things. God's essence is life itself. God is the, the ground of everything. So God isn't working hard at being God. God is effortless like nature. Someone once gave me a card that said, nature never hurries, and yet everything is accomplished. Nature never hurries, never rushes, and yet everything is accomplished in the perfect time. So one of the things that we have to accept is that God's timing is different than ours is, different than ours ever would be. And so we don't have to assume that because things are not happen, happening according to our schedule, that something's gone wrong. One woman who has lived a very full life, a very beautiful, unguarded life, once said to me, God has answered every prayer I have ever uttered. God has given me everything I've ever asked for, just not on my timeline. God gives us everything we ever ask for but not necessarily in the time that we would have God do it. I know a friend who told me about a friend of hers that has a tattoo on their wrist, right where their watch would be. And the tattoo simply says, right on schedule. Right on schedule, no matter where they are or what time it is. An ancient poet once said, the spot that you're standing at right now, God once circled on a map and wrote your name there. It's, it's God's will for us to be right where we are, doing right what we're doing. And if, if what we're doing where we are is not of God, we're just one decision, one choice away from changing that. So perhaps the biggest struggle we have in letting God be God is allowing God to be the master of the timeline of things, not demanding that God do things on our schedule, but placing ourselves in God's plan. I remember receiving such peace one time when I was visiting a priest friend of mine at his assignment. It was Father Dan Quinn, uh, who I studied with. He was ordained one year ahead of me, uh, and he was also sent with me to Bolivia to work on our Spanish skills back about 10 or 11 years ago, 
12 years ago now. Oh my goodness, another year has changed. Anyway, Father Dan was assigned to a small town, a parish in Hancock, New York, on the New York-Pennsylvania border. And in his rectory, he had a little sign that looked like it was given to him by somebody who must love him very much. And it said, the will of God will never take you where the grace of God will not sustain you. I'll say it again. The will of God will never take you where the grace of God will not sustain you. It seems to me that that's a very important belief to have and to nurture. God's will will never take me where God's grace will not keep me uplifted. I will receive the strength I need to meet the challenges I face. I choose to believe that because God did not bring me this far just to let me go now. So we have to apply this kind of faith to the moments in our life when we experience setbacks because setbacks are part of the plan. It's, it's fascinating to realize too that so often in our life, what appears to be a setback may be an opportunity, something that is meant to catapult us to a deeper way of living or a, a, a greater opportunity for joy. A good example of this comes when we think of something that happens that causes us to have to dig down deeper than we ever had before and use skills that we've never used before. And then we realize as life goes on that those skills were needed later for something that we never could have known was coming. A job, a challenge, an opportunity, a tragedy that we never would have known was something that we needed to prepare for. I heard one author once say that there are four types of setbacks and all of them require their own approach. One of them is a temporary setback where you experience something that bums you out, frustrates you, but it, it simply requires a little bit of perseverance. It requires you to, to relax so that it can get worked out, allowing something to get worked out that was kind of just a hitch, uh, a bump in the road. Another kind of setback is one that points you in a new direction. Maybe you were focusing on a career that wasn't quite right for you, and it was a disappointment in that job, or perhaps even being laid off or fired that caused you to seek a different route of an employment. And then you realize, oh my goodness, this is so much better. This is so much closer to who I am and what I'm called to do. Another type of setback could be one that reveals some hidden or unconscious parts of yourself that needed to be dealt with. Perhaps you hit a setback and it releases all of these negative emotions or negative beliefs that were, were quietly running the show in the background and you needed to know about them so that you could look at them one by one and cast them aside. Sometimes a setback allows us to process something that needs to be faced that we hadn't yet been able to look at. And finally, Sometimes a setback prepares the way for a new opportunity. For example, if someone is sitting next to us as our spouse, partner, someone who's um, right there by our side, perhaps it's a, a work colleague that we work closely with, we started a business together, and then that person winds up saying, I don't wanna do this anymore, and they leave, and we might feel completely devastated by that until we realize there can only be one seat next to me, one business partner that I can have. And if that seat is occupied by the wrong person, I need to make sure it is vacated so that the right person can be there. And those setbacks, painful though they can be, are actually opportunities. So friends, we are given the opportunity every day to engage in what one saint called the sacrament of the present moment. 
wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I can choose to see as God's will revealed to me right here and right now. Where am I supposed to be? Right here. What am I supposed to be doing? Whatever it is that's in front of me. Maybe God isn't letting us down. Maybe our expectations just aren't in full alignment with what God knows is best for us. Just some thoughts for us as we continue to ask in so many ways, in so many circumstances, seriously, God? May God bless you all.